What's going on guys, this is Rob, and if you're enjoying the content here on my channel, then make sure you hit the like button, and make sure you hit subscribe so you can help decide what direction the content on my channel goes in, in the foreseeable future. So for this installment of our Versus series, we're actually gonna be taking a step away from the Marvel vs. DC line of comics, and I actually wanna focus on Franklin Richards versus the White Lantern, Kyle Rayner. God, this is gonna be a fun one. The reason why is because these characters have actually both been featured in my How to Kill Superhero series. And so I thought it'd be kinda cool to like pit them against one another and see which one would come out on top. So like always, we're gonna go through each of these characters relatively briefly and then decide what winner we're gonna have just because of the fact that we've run over this stuff before so first and foremost franklin's mutant powers allow him to warp reality and by this i mean that he can do literally anything any thought that he has franklin can make it real and so if something exists that he doesn't want to exist anymore he can make that happen if something doesn't exist that he wants to bring into reality he can bring that into existence as well and so he can really manipulate the molecules that make a matter thereby altering the chemical makeup of literally any object or person to make them exactly how he wants them to be. In other words, anything Franklin wants to do, he can do. Now, in addition to warping reality, Franklin is a powerful telepath and telekinetic. Franklin's telepathic abilities are so strong that they're able to grant him precognition or the ability to see into the future, although this ability is limited to only a few days into the future. Now, as if that weren't enough, Franklin can produce powerful blasts of energy that can project himself into the astral plane. What makes this battle more interesting, however, is that in addition to being exceptionally powerful, Franklin seems to to be immortal, as he once remarks to Galactus that the two of them will be the only ones left when the universe is destroyed and reformed. And so the question is just how powerful is Franklin? Well, the comics have yet to establish any upper limit to his abilities, but there are several feats that he has performed that give us some idea of his power level. Franklin's reality warping power is so advanced that he was able to create a pocket universe. He's also shown an ability to neutralize the powers of other superhumans by like constructing a box that negated the destructive quality of Black Bolt's voice. So that he can speak normally and has turned an energy blast from a celestial into a harmless stream of flowers. Franklin has traveled to the realm of Mephisto, one of the most powerful demons in Marvel Comics, and defeated him, and has even turned Galactus into his herald during Jonathan Hickman's run on Fantastic Four. Franklin has also used his reality warping ability as a defense mechanism several times. He's withstood a celestial's physical attack as well as one of their energy blasts, and in fact, to get an idea of how powerful Franklin is, it's been stated that the celestials consider Franklin to possess power equal to them. Now, as powerful as he is, is, Franklin is not without his weaknesses. First of all, despite his immense power, his physical body does not seem to be enhanced in any way. All the feats of defense and durability that we've talked about before are seemingly the byproducts of his reality warping instead of any actual physical durability. And so if that's the case as it seems to be, then without reality warping power, Franklin is just as vulnerable as any other human being. Another notable weakness really only affects Franklin at certain points depending on how he's being written at the time, but it's worth mentioning nonetheless. What I mean by this is that at various times throughout his history, Franklin Richards has been depicted at being various ages. More often, he's depicted as a child, but sometimes we see an adult version of Franklin. The child version of Franklin, though, has a particular weakness in that he's only ever depicted as being too immature and inexperienced to be in full control of his powers. Not only does that mean that Franklin does not have access to the full extent of his abilities, but he could also possibly cause unintentional harm to himself or others. And so clearing out Franklin Richards, what I want to do is I want to transition over to Kyle Rayner. Now, the first thing we need to understand is that each of the various lantern colors correspond to an emotion within the emotional spectrum. Green lanterns correspond to willpower, blue to hope, red to rage, yellow to fear, orange to greed, indigo to compassion, and violet, which is personified by the star sapphire core, to love. As a white lantern, Kyle Rayner is the embodiment of all these colors and their corresponding emotions. As such, Kyle possesses all the powers of each of the lantern cores. This means that he can create constructs powered by will like the green lanterns or fear like the yellow lanterns lanterns, also known as the Sinestro Core. He can emit poisonous blood like the Red Lanterns, heal injuries like the Blue Lanterns, steal the identities of those he's defeated like Larflees, the Orange Lantern, force people to feel love like the Star Sapphires, and teleport like the Indigo Lanterns. In addition to these abilities, Kyle possesses several skills that are unique to the White Lantern Core, such as resurrecting the dead, creating light constructs of white energy, phasing through solid objects, generating force fields, creating energy blasts, going invisible, healing himself, flying at super speeds, 
and manipulating reality. Now, as powerful as Kyle is, he can become even more powerful as he embraces the power of life, which fuels the White Lantern Ring. At one time, Kyle's White Lantern Ring contained the life equation, a mathematical equation proving the value of life, and Kyle acquired the equation after passing through the Source Wall, which is an interdimensional barrier in the DC Universe once thought to be impenetrable. As far as exactly how powerful Kyle Rayner is in his White Lantern form, it's honestly hard to say. His powers seem to be pretty much limitless, and we see him during a fight in the future during Green Lantern New Guardians features in number one, where he seems to be basically omnipotent. However, it's hard to really pinpoint what his specific power set and power levels are due to the fact that they haven't really been fleshed out that well in comics. Now, as far as weaknesses go, it needs to be mentioned that the White Lantern Ring, like all rings, has to be periodically recharged from the power battery that supplies the ring with power. Now, this may not necessarily be a weakness so much as a limitation, but is worth noting anyway. But because Kyle's ability to operate the power ring is dependent on him being in control of his mind and emotions, it can be inferred that he would be susceptible to any sort of psychic or telepathic attack that could alter his mental or emotional state. Furthermore, the ability to wield the White Lantern Ring is contingent on the wearer's ability to believe in the power of life. With that being said, if someone used their psychic or telepathic abilities to negate Kyle's belief in this, his power level would effectively diminish. And so the question becomes, with all that being said, who wins? Well, honestly, this has probably been the hardest battle that we've done in terms of declaring a winner. These characters are both powerful reality warpers. And when you're dealing with characters who can alter the very fabric of reality itself, determining which one is more powerful is insanely hard. Both of these competitors can literally cause any whim that crosses their mind to come to fruition, including wiping each other from existence. And so how do you choose a winner? Well, I think in order to do that, you have to look at the shortcomings of each character. With that in mind, a lot of this depends on which version of Franklin Richards we're dealing with. If we're dealing with Franklin as a child, which is how he's most often depicted, then I think Kyle gets the win here due to his experience and control over his power. The reason why is that it's been well established that the child version of Franklin Richards often does not have full control over his powers. While this can make him more volatile and dangerous to the point where his father, Reed Richards, found it necessary to create psychic inhibitors that would suppress his power, it also suggests that in a battle setting, Franklin might not always make the most rational or strategically sound decisions. And for that reason, I think Kyle will eventually get the win. But if we're talking about adult Franklin Richards, things change significantly. Honestly, I don't really know of a way to distinguish which one of these characters is stronger based on the evidence in the comics since both are depicted as basically being omnipotent. What I think makes a difference here though is once again, the character's shortcomings, specifically Kyle's vulnerability to telepathy. With a reality warper like Franklin, it's easy to overlook his other abilities, namely the fact that he's a powerful telepath on the cosmic level. With that in mind, Franklin should be able to shut down Kyle's control over his emotions and thoughts, rendering him unable to effectively wield the White Lantern Ring. Of course, I could see this battle going either way, if I want to be honest with you guys, as both these characters are able to warp reality in so many ways that it's impossible to account for them all. But I think this one advantage of Franklin's telepathy is the one thing that could tip the scales in his favor. And so ultimately, if it's adult Franklin Richards versus the White Lantern Kyle Rayner, I think the adult Franklin Richards takes it. But I I know you guys have opinions. And I know somebody's gonna be like, actually, Rob. So post your comments down below and tell me whether or not you think I'm right. And, and what should our next versus series be? I'm kind of curious what you think our next versus video should be. But if you guys are new here to Comics Explained, make sure you hit the subscribe button to become part of the Rob core. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and yeah, I will catch you all later. Peace.